Give me a mic. Thank you. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Orson Welles. I'm speaking for the Mercury Theater, and what follows is supposed to advertise our first motion picture. Citizen Kane is the title, and we hope it can correctly be called a coming attraction. It's certainly coming, coming to this theater, and I think our Mercury actors make it an attraction. I'd like you to meet them. Speaking of attractions, well, the chorus girls are certainly an attraction, but frankly, ladies and gentlemen, we're just showing you the chorus girls for purposes of ballyhoo. It's a pretty nice valley hoop. But here are some of our real Mercury people. This is the first time you've seen most of them on the screen. Hey, uh, give Joe a little light. Thanks. Now smile for the folks, Joe. Smile. Joseph Cotton, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. Joseph Cotton. I think you're going to see a lot of him. Here's Ruth Warwick, whom I know you love. Ruth. Look at the camera, Ruth. <laughs> we caught Ruth with her hair up. And here's somebody you've all heard on the radio, so I don't have to tell you he's wonderful, Ray Collins. Dorothy Comengore is a name I'm going to repeat. Dorothy Comengore. I won't have to repeat it much longer. You'll be repeating it. And here's George Kouluris, who's a grand actor. I'll say that name again. George Kouluris. Watch it. Here comes Everett Sloan. Look out, Everett. Oops. Everett Sloan, ladies and gentlemen. He isn't necessarily a comedian. And here's one of the best actors in the world, Agnes Moorhead. I've said a lot of nice things, but Erskine Sanford deserves some more. Erskine, Erskine Sanford. So does Paul. Paul, Paul Stewart, everybody. Citizen Kane is a modern American story about a man called Kane, Charles Foster Kane. I don't know how to tell you about him. There's so many things to say. I'll turn you over instead to the characters in the picture. As you'll see, they feel very strongly on the subject. Charles Foster Kane is a... <laughs> he started the war. But do you think if it hadn't been for Mr. Kane, the United States would have the Panama Canal? I hope Foster Kane is nothing more or less than a communist! Kane, governor. Listen, when the voters of this state and Mrs. Kane learn what I found out about Mr. Kane and a certain little blondie named Susan Alexander, he couldn't be elected dog catcher. I'm going to skin Mr. Charles Foster Kane alive. I'm going to marry him next week at the White House. Emily, I hear you've been stepping out with Charlie Kane. I... Of course I love him. I gave him $60 million. Well, of course I love him. He's the richest man in America. But all the girls say about him at first, but you know, I can't help but admire him. He's crazy. He's wonderful. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what you'll think about Mr. Kane. I can't imagine. You see, I play the part myself. Well, Kane is a hero and a scoundrel, a no-account, and a swell guy, a great lover, a great American citizen, and a dirty dog. It depends on who's talking about him. What's the real truth about Charles Foster Kane? I wish you'd come to this theater when Citizen Kane plays here and decide for yourself.